Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going up north to Scandia, Minnesota, where we find young 16-year-old driver Joe Valento. Joe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. So we're going to get right into this because we got a lot to cover um, since we've done our last spotlight interview. Let's start with some basic things. You got your driver's license. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, interesting in itself. Uh, definitely a little bit different than the race car. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for me was having to drive with one foot. You know, it's... Uh, it's different, but you know, it's fun to be, be able to drive and obviously have that sense of freedom. Being 16, you get to, you know, you're still under your parents' roof, but you know, you can come and go as, as you kind of please. And uh, I took the trip up to uh, KBR Performance by myself this past weekend and uh, spent the, the weekend up with Kelly and the guys helping out a, a kid run a super late model. So that was fun. So um, just getting that uh, sense of adventure and just, you know, a little bit of. Uh, independent yeah oh for your parents it's never going to be the same for them no so there's two ways to look at that there's a way to look at it that they worry about because you are out mm -hmm. there and it's going to take some time for them to adjust and then there's that good side that when you can just go hey joe run to the store for us hey joe run over here for right. us hey joe right. do this for us has that started already uh so it was it was funny uh when we shot my driving five, uh, we actually did. We ran to the store. My mom went in, and I filmed my driving five in the car because that's where the good service was. So I mean, a little bit here and there, but she knows I, I'm not a shopper, not a grocery shopper at all. All right. So I, I just got to ask you one quick question about the driver's license. When you got ready to take your driving test, did you look at the instructor and tell him, say, you know, I, I do drive a race car as a profession? That's funny you say that. I didn't say it before, I said it after. And what was their response? Just kind of, she just kind of looked at me and smiled. Like, oh, really? Well, what kind of car? Is, what do you race? And stuff. So I just explained it and stuff. Oh, that's really cool. And you, you did a great job. And so definitely couldn't tell it all and stuff. And just funny. funny. I just thought it'd be cool if you, if you grab that steering wheel and kind of look over to the side and go, you may want to tighten that belt up a little bit. Yeah, no kidding. If I should have showed up with my helmet on and suit and stuff. But the funny part was the person I did the behind the wheels with, so I did it with two up two people, a girl and a guy. The girl's father used to race street stocks. She raced street stocks on dirt. And then the guy instructor that I had used to do drag racing. So it was hilarious. Both my driving instructors had been race car drivers. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, let's get into the to the racing side of things real quick. Well, let, let's know. Let's back up a little bit. Tomorrow's one of your favorite days. Back to school. Yeah, back to school. <laughs> it's uh, going to be interesting. You know, we're we're full masked up at school. Uh, it sounds like we're going to have a few like breaks during the day where we can go outside and take them off and just get some fresh air. Um, we don't have to wear them for lunch. But so the plan is to be back at school uh, basically until there's a case. Then they have to shut the school down for cleaning and we'll be online for a couple of days until the school's cleaned and we can go back. So it's, you know, it's going to be, we'll be back to online before you know it. But I start uh, to say that I, probably, I appreciate that that's probably not going to last very long if you only got to have one case yeah. and then you go back online. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, that's the problem. So. You know, it's going to, well, never mind. I'm not even going to go down that path. I'll just skip that. I was going to talk about, you know, you're, you're in high school now, so you could be, like, scoping out the girls, but the only thing you'd be able to say is, oh, you have nice eyes. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Everyone's got masks on, you know, you can't, uh, everyone's, like, hiding their identity. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, let's get into some racing now. So you've had a pretty good year. You want to walk us through your first couple of races? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we started with our first race in Clover, Wisconsin, uh, a track that we've never been to. I've never tested there or anything. So a little bit unknown showing up there. It's uh, a small, small quarter mile, pretty banked on both ends, down the straightaways as well. It's, uh, it's 
it's fairly narrow straightaways, so like down by the coming by the the, the flag stand, you could actually kick your right rear off and like go off in the dirt if you weren't careful. But um, we unloaded. We were top five truck pretty much all day long. Qualified good. Um, and then for the feature race, we started fifth and uh, moved up to the front pretty quick. We got around a couple of cars that got entangled up right away, so I got around a couple of cars uh, right away, and then it was just hunting down the leaders pretty much, the, the top two cars, and um, just kind of followed the second place cars. He went around the first, and then I had eventually just gotten a, a good run and, and um, got to lead. I think it was around lap 25 or so, or so and uh, pretty much just let it uh, from there, and you know, we had a good truck, we, you know, and I learned the track fairly quick how to run it, and because it was a little bit of a tricky track off of two, it's all all getting good drive pretty much at that track. It was all the whoever had the best drive and wasn't sliding down the straightaways uh, was going to prevail. So we got a good balance on the truck fairly quickly, and then with me being able to learn the track uh, fairly quickly, we had good speed right away and. Um, was able to get out front in the clean air and lead it, you know, the rest of the 25 laps of the 50 lap feature. So, got our first win in the truck series. Definitely, definitely was uh, uh, was fun and uh, a good race. We we had we had a fast truck, but there was pressure from the second place truck all throughout the race. So, down in the last few laps, there's a few cautions. There's a little bit of a nail biter, but uh, got it done. And just feels good to get you know that first one under your belt and just. The confidence booster because we know we had the speed all last year. Just, just dumb luck pretty much just held us up from getting our first win last year. Uh, we know we had good speed, obviously unload with a good truck every weekend, and you know just wasn't meant to be last year. But to come out swinging and get it off the first first race of the year was good. And then we headed down to Hawkeye Downs in Iowa, a track I haven't raced at as well. It's a fast half mile, really abrasive track, hard on tires, and uh, so we unloaded and we went out. I think there was about an hour qualifying. We unloaded and went out with eight minutes left and went to the top of the board right away. And uh, so that was good. Had a lot of speed there right away. And something about the half miles between me and the truck are just really good there. We just click on half miles. We, I don't know if it's my driving style or if it's just what the truck likes what Kelly prepares but half miles are really strong for us John loaded at the top of the board qualified I think third and then for the feature race since we had won at Clover we had to start at the back of the invert so we started 11th and had a little fender bender right away uh, someone checked up right in front of me had nowhere to go uh, smashed the nose in a little bit with like two laps in so I was a little bit a little bit like, ah, uh, how is this going to affect us, you know, because the nose is pushed down, so the flare is going to be down, or we're going to have more downforce on the front, you know, is that going to make us tight or what, so just kind of ran it out, and it didn't affect it at all, that thing was bad, fast there, bad, fast, I mean, we ran to the front within five laps, five and laps, so it's so it's say you, you, you raced to the front very quickly in that race, and again, we won't even get into the crazy, I, I guess, invert rules that you guys have up there because it's, to me, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. But uh, to be able to come from that starting position to the front that quick was, was really impressive. And then uh, I can remember your truck setting in Victory Lane and the snows was all smashed in. I think you made a great uh, commercial and a, uh, a kind of a, a little poster for five star bodies because you guys just popped that thing out and was ready to move on to race number three. Yeah, that's what we did. You know, it's just a little bit warm after the race. You pop it right out, push it right out, and she's ready to rock for the next race. All right. So let's recap the next few races pretty quick here so we can kind of move into some other areas because I know that uh, one of the things that, that I wanted to highlight on was the fact that you took a trip out east and ran a uh, basically a pro late model out there in the Carolina pro late model series and I know that has to be uh, quite a bit different than the truck and the fact that you were at one of the most historic famed tracks in the nation which was Hickory Motor Speedway so tell us a little bit about that adventure uh, yes, it was fun um, getting to run with Buggy Fletcher and all the guys at DLP Motorsports. It was uh, a fun opportunity, one that popped up uh, this year that 
you know, we put together and uh, just fun, you know, to go down to the to North Carolina and run at Hickory, like you said, a really historical track. Uh, it was good, and I've never run a pro late mile before, so it was a little bit new there for me as well. Uh, you know, the difference from the pro late to the truck might, you know, on paper seems like a lot, but feel, you know, isn't a, isn't it doesn't it didn't feel a whole lot. Both of the both of the chassis were hand piece. The hand piece truck that I run in the Pro Late was a hand piece car, and uh, so what what the feeling that I was feeling that was the same basically. The truck runs a harder tire, obviously a little bit less horsepower. Uh, the Super runs a little bit more horsepower, but a softer tire. So what I was thinking was that softer tire kind of makes up for the horsepower and still has that stuck feeling. So really. From our series of trucks, because we have to have that hard tire, not a lot of grip, it didn't feel a whole lot different. It was just nice for me to be able to get in and feel comfortable right away, you know, and I could just go out and run the run my lap, learn the track. Obviously, Pickery is a little bit of a, a, a hard track to learn with the bumps into one and two and uh, just just a, a fun track, you know. It, it was I had a lot of fun, you know. I, I liked the track a lot. It, it was... Uh, a technical track, very line sensitive. Um, you know that the pro late race, the race itself was 75 laps. Uh, that was the longest race I've ever run. A uh, little bit of saving came into play. That's the first time I've ever experienced that uh, because the longest race I'd run before that's 50 laps down in New Smyrna on a super late model. Uh, so the 75 lap pro late, that was the longest one that I've run. So a little bit of saving came into play. Um, you know, we ran a good race. We we started, I think. 10th, 10th -ish thing and uh, was just saving, taking cars off, picking them off whenever I could, um, stayed out of the wrecks up front, and found myself in third place on one of the restarts. Obviously, the inside lane doesn't seem to roll there as good for, for the Pro Late models at least. Um, the outside guy got around me, so I dropped back to fourth, uh, ran there for pretty much the majority of the race, you know, after... I had gotten there, and you know, there was about five laps left or so. We were kind of running down the third place car. I would have gotten to it. I don't know if I would have had enough momentum to make a move, but we got to the third place car, and um, just just got uh, got tagged in the left rear, coming off a of four and spun around. So uh, they had actually spun us around and hit our left front, so we had to come in full fender out. You know, start at the back of the field, but. Overall, you know, it was a good run. You know, can't really complain a whole lot. Something happened that we can't really, uh, can't really change or couldn't do anything about. So, what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah, and that's why we always say we look at the race performance, not so much the result. Because I was there for that race, and I'll be, I'll be truthful with you that I wasn't a very happy camper about the way that thing unfolded at the end. Because I do believe that you would have caught the third place car and you would have passed them. But again, you got tagged in the rear. But, you know, when you go back to the very beginning of this, you kind of had an advantage there a little bit because I think you kind of packed that guy named Kelly Byers away in your suitcase and let him out when you get out to Hickory. And I know Kelly was a big help uh, getting that car set up and making that thing competitive while you guys were there. Well, for sure. And Kelly's so knowledgeable, and I, I you know, stress this so much. He's so smart in how he does things, and obviously that's because he's grown up working on cars and working for different chassis manufacturers, obviously being a race car driver himself, all of that plays keys into basically, you know, the whole recipe. You know, he's just the key ingredient to, to the recipe that would be eventually ending up in victory lane. And uh, he's just so smart about how he does things. things. And uh, We went down and tested the day before the race, and he came down with us and, you know, really really gave us the extra edge that we needed to get the speed and the extra speed that I needed because obviously him knowing me as a driver a little bit better than Buggy did, he knows what sort of adjustments I like a little bit more, which ones I don't like, so he could kind of, you know, hey, maybe we should try this, maybe we should try that. And then by the end of practice Friday, I mean, we had pretty dang good speed for the track conditions, so obviously bringing with him with was a very, very big benefit. Yeah, no doubt about that. I can see this relationship that the two of you are bonding, and I think that's going to really help you as you start to move forward in your career. So we only got a few minutes left here. Um, let's talk about 
Anything new that's going to be coming up between now and the end of the season? You know, we, we've talked about a few different things, a couple of things that I'm not really ready to talk about yet in public, but I'm hoping, hoping for a couple of new things. Obviously, we have the truck. We've got a full schedule coming up. I think four weekends right in a row we're running uh, Madison, which is a really fun track. I love that track. We've had speed every time we go there. That was the first race I've ever ran in the truck series. We're glad to go back there. We weren't sure because that's really near the capital. Well, it is the capital of Wisconsin, actually. And they're really strict down there with the whole pandemic going on. So uh, they had shut down the first race of the year. So excited to go back there. I know we run at the Dells, which is a track we've had really good speed at as well. Uh, back to Marshfield, which is a track I like. And then back to Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson's a track that we struggled a little bit at, me as a driver. Uh, the last time we were there, we, uh, well, I, I should say, I figured out the track um, a lot better and how to drive and just drive it smart and be able to pass. You know, we, we came from 16th to 6th in the last feature we ran there, which is in the truck series kind of unheard of because just the, the way the track is, it's so, so hard to pass in the trucks. It's all momentum based. And, in the trucks and that track, it's just so hard to do that. And uh, just kind of figured it out that last race. So excited to go back there and uh, see what we got. And then obviously we have the cross for Oktoberfest. That'll be a fun one. And then at the end of the end of the year, wrapping it up is the Dells again. Uh, so exciting, exciting end of the year. A uh, couple of things. Hopefully we'll be able to put it put together and maybe run by then. But uh, Otherwise, you know, finish up the season in the truck, hopefully go for the championship. All right. Well, as we wrap up, Joe, do you have any sponsors that you'd like to thank? Of course. Uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to Nitro Lubricant, Art at Mill, Nap Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and, of course, Race Face Brand Development. Well, there you go. A rising star from up in Minnesota. If you'd like to keep up with Joe, go to JoeValentoRacing.com. Click on the fan zone, go in, register as for digital newsletter, follow him on Facebook and Instagram. And Joe, again, thanks for being with us this evening. And all of you, thanks for tuning in. My name is Rod Wortham, and again, thanks for watching. We'll see all of you back here in two weeks.